copies that I bought uh, five, 10 years ago are worth a hell of a lot more today if I bought them in the right location, in Colorado, in the ski area country, or in San Diego, or some, or Orange County, or something like that. There's, and especially right now, inventory is so low, and demand is so high in certain marketplaces. Um, so it's the greatest business in the world, but you gotta focus on the, on the marketing and speaking to enough people on a consistent basis. Someone will say yes today. Absolutely. Next question or role play? You want to do a role play? Uh, I'll give you somebody, give me some objections, some stalls, um, a question you didn't know how to answer. I'll be glad to role play it. Give me a tough one. Anybody here ever have a, a prospect said they, uh, uh, they want to think about it? They got to talk to somebody else, call them in two, three weeks. Anybody have, ever get objections here? I don't, know if this rento, I don't know if this rent don't deals for me there, Claude. I, I, I'm not sure. I've been burned before. So yeah, I, I, don't, I really don't think I'm going to do this right now. Oh, I agree with you. If you're not comfortable with it, you probably shouldn't do it, uh, Jason. Jason, before I go, can I just ask you one quick question, though? Yes, you can. Yeah, you, you have a family. You have a, how many kids? I got two. Two kids. Another one on the way, I thought. Maybe. No? Uh, no. Okay. I, you know. Uh, the thing about it is you've been renting, uh, for how long have you been renting that lovely apartment? Uh, well, I, I guess the, I was talking about a, a, a buyer, like, sorry, a seller, a guy trying to sell his house and he's, he said he was rent to own, did rent to own before, but he's, he got, yeah, you, you're that guy. you're like, okay. So you have a house for, what's the role play then? I'm confused. I thought okay. you were the tenant buyer, a potential tenant buyer. Yeah, no, I was talking to a fellow the other day and he said, uh, you know what? I tried rent to own before and I got burned and I don't, I don't think I want to do it. And I said, okay. All I, all so I said to him was, okay, ahead. no, you go finish your statement. All I said to him was, well, fair, fair enough. I appreciate you being upfront with me. And we just basically ended the conversation. So. Okay. Why was he interested in renting the home in the first place? Go back to be, here's the takeaway word, empathy. What, what is he feeling? What is he thinking? Why was he, what was his need or greed or his problem? Why was he advertising it for rent or for sale anyway? Okay. No, don't give me an answer. It wasn't I, a I don't know. I, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. So you got to find out. So if we role play, Jason, I really respect your opinion. You know, uh, renting is difficult at best and doing something you're not comfortable with. I respect your opinion. Let me ask you something. This, uh, this home you have available. Is it for sale or for rent right now? It's for sale, Claude. Oh, okay. And was it an investment property or your own old home? Or what was it exactly? I hope you don't mind me asking. No, I, I'm a builder and I sell. Uh, I just buy, I build my homes and I sell them. Oh, this beautiful. Just, How long has this been on the market then? Uh, a couple of months. Oh, okay. It's an, you don't have a construction loan on it that's costing you high interest in payments, do you? I see what you're doing. You're digging for pain. Yes, I am. You, what, do you know why I'm doing that? <laughs> so, so you can help me solve my problem. That's right. Now, if I develop a relationship with you, maybe we can do business today. Most contractors that I meet, see off the role play, I stay in the role. I stay consistent. And I don't argue with you. When you say something logical and reasonable, what am I going to do? Get defensive and argue with you? Is that going to get us closer together or further apart? It's further apart further apart. So don't argue when they're being reasonable. Okay. If they are being unreasonable or they're making a mistake, say, Hey, sir, would you like me to tell you the truth or tell you a fable? And they'll usually say, tell me the truth. You're making, then you go in, you're making a mistake, sir. I've been in the same situation. And then you go into storytelling mode to support your, your, your consensus. Your not the wrong word. Your what you're trying to get across. Okay. okay, so what we're trying to do is develop not a parent to a child or two, two people arguing parent to parent or whatever. We're trying to get to two adults who are non emotional and logical. I do want to make you emotional, especially about money and stuff. So that's where I'm digging for in the, ro in the role play. And I'll go, Jason, let me just ask you this because I have a lot of friends who are contractors. They get contractor loans, which are usually very high interest and they're very short term, six months, a year. Um, are you close to that uh, balloon payment on that con on that loan for this property you, you built? Okay. Yes, I am. Uh, I got three months left on it. Okay. Do you have a backup plan or 
Um, you know, so you, do you have other resources of income so you can purchase this property and substitute the loan? Because if you don't, maybe I can help you on that part too. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this, Jason. If I could get, if I could buy the property from you, I am an investor. I look for price or terms. If, if, um, would you be willing to wholesale that property to you for a cash deal to get you out of that loan? You'll still make a profit, not as big as you want it, but you'll get out of the loan. You'll make a smaller profit, and I can close and I can close before the end of January. That wouldn't be something you'd be interested in today, right? Uh, that's something I might consider, Claude, if the numbers were right. Okay, what kind of number? Boom, then we get into it. Did you guys hear the? I know George picked this up, and maybe Marcos. Did I use a redirection just now? Yep. I used a positive or a negative redirection. When I want a positive answer, I go negative. You wouldn't want to do a deal like that if I could get you out of that loan with small profit, would you? You know, sometimes I'll even support it by saying, it's okay to say no to me. I'm not trying to pressure. Boom. These are, these are methods of persuasion to get them to the yes ladder, to get them to, uh, I want the response and I'm trying to lead him to saying, what do I want Jason to say when we get off the phone here about yeah. me? That he really likes you. He likes me. What else? Give me something stronger. The Trust big T. You. The big T, baby. Trust. 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 I want him to get off the phone and say, hey, you know what? The guy made a lot of sense. The guy, the guy was straightforward. He wasn't bullshitting me. He didn't go into the presentation or features and benefits and all that. He was, we had a straight adult to adult conversation. He was offering a solution, not the one I wanted, but it is a solution. And maybe I found a straight guy in a very unstraight world. Maybe this is a guy. And then I follow up with him, like we were talking about earlier. I'll send a video to Jason. Jason, great conversation. Really appreciate the honest dialogue. I've attached a letter of intent here based on our conversation, what I can do, how I can close in 30 days. And what I'm looking for was a cash sale uh, with this guy. And so if I get this property, let's say 50,000 under market, what will I get? And I got a contract with Jason for 50,000 under market, but I don't have um, $200,000 to do the cash right now. What do I do with that, George or Tony or anybody? What do I do? Get on a contract and do it. What's that, Tony? Get on a contract and wholesale it. Wholesale it. Somebody hold, uh, wholesale that contract to me. You guys, somebody take over my position. I'll be, the, I'll be Claude, the investor. You've got a $250,000 property from Jason. You got it, you got it for $200,000. You got a $50,000 spread there. But you got to close in 30 days and you don't have the money right now. Hello, Claude, the, uh, hello, Claude, the contractor. Uh, Claude, the investor. Hello. Hey, Claude. How, how's it going today? Oh, it's going wonderful. Who's this? Fantastic. Hey, hey, listen, Claude. Um, real quick question. I don't suppose you'd be interested in making fifty thousand dollars today, would you? Holy shit! Do you have my attention? <laughs> that was a Great. off the role play. That was a beautiful opener. He did that perfectly. What's the number one thing to get people's attention? Greed. Money. Greed, baby. Greed, baby. Go get right to it. Skip the Happy New Year. How about those Broncos? Skip all that bullshit. Get right to the greed button with this guy. If you've got the authority, the decision maker. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry to interrupt, but that was good, man. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Well, listen, Claude, I, uh, I don't have but just a minute here real quick, but um, <laughs> I just got a property under contract, and uh, the numbers look really excellent. Uh, we have it under contract, and, and basically, you can make $50,000 on this today. I only have a couple of people that I'm about to call, and uh, you're one of the first people on my list. I don't suppose that uh, if you can get $50,000 in your pocket on this deal, that that would be something you're interested in, uh, would it? Or do you have enough deals that you're working on right now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm always looking for a deal. Can you have some, um, do you have a prospectus or something you can send me? I need more information before I make this decision. Absolutely. What's your email address? Uh, uh, you mentor, at, mentor at Mac.com. Okay. I'll send it over there. And um, if I send that to you uh, within the next 15 minutes, uh, how soon can you take a look at that and get back to me today? When can I'll we talk look at about it right away? I'll call you within the hour. So you, uh, so bottom line this for me, uh, Tony, I appreciate you calling me. I love when I can get a deal. I can, I can make $50,000. What do you get out of this deal? What I get out of this deal is I'm uh, looking to wholesale this and get out of the contract myself. I make a little profit by getting this sold over to you and you're going to make the majority of the profit here. 
Okay, so the property, you have a contract here. I'm looking at your email right now. You have a contract for 200,000 and you say it's got an ARV of 250. How do you, what do you get out of this deal? You just doing this because you're a nice guy? Of course I'm a nice guy, but of course where the money is, is I have it under contract for a little bit less than that and I'm gonna make a wholesale profit on that. But as long as I make a little bit of something and you make a lot of something, that's, that's, not, a profit. Uh, that's not a problem for us, is it? No, well, I just like to know the numbers. Your contract that you sent me, stay with the deal that I did with Jason off the role play. It's two hundred thousand dollar contract. It's worth two fifty. So you don't. But this is where you don't want to lose credibility with me by hiding numbers. I this is a technique I use. Some guys don't, are not comfortable with it. I'm very transparent on it. I don't mind telling them how much I make. Maybe you, that that's not your style, but that's my that's my style kind of. If I'm totally transparent with him, I don't think he has an issue if I make a quick 15000 or whatever we negotiate. Right. So how much do we have this property on the contract again? Remind me, please. We, we have a contract from Jason did a contract. I, I negotiated with him for 200000 It has a value of two fifty. You're selling it to me, Claude, the investor. You need to make some money on this deal. And I just, I kind of just shine the, the, the white hot light on you right now. Okay. So you can either lose a little credibility and kind of hide that from me, which is the feeling I got, or you can just be totally transparent and say, this is what I need to, why are we in business gentlemen? To make money today. Amen. Okay. So you need, you want to get that money today or do you want to wait on a 30 day escrow? Today. Go for it. Let's go. So how do you make money on this, Tony? I don't know you. I've never done business with you. Well, I have it under contract for 200000 and I'd like to wholesale it to you and make a little bit of profit for myself while you make the majority of the profit. So what I'd like, I like to do is offer this to you. I'd like to offer this to you for two hundred fifteen. I have it under contract for two hundred. You wouldn't mind uh, making 35000 today, would you? Yeah, well, I want more. I'm, a, I'm Claude the Greedy Investor, and $15,000, you just got this from this pal guy. You just got this contract uh, 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 30 minutes ago. Uh, um, fifteen thousand dollars for thirty minutes work. Come on, let's get real. What's the least you take uh, to do a deal with me? <laughs> Go ahead, Claude. Come on, can you stay in there? Don't give up. Okay, okay. okay. Well, suppose we could work out a better deal. What's the most you're prepared to pay today? If we can get this uh, off of I'll, give you, I'll give you five grand. I'll give you not fifteen. I'll give you five grand. Five grand, that's, that's pretty, uh, it's not gonna work for me, Claude. I appreciate you working with me, but we need to, uh, we need to work it out a little bit more. I'm asking uh, 215 to make 15 for myself and you make the 35,000. Should, should we keep talking? Is that gonna be a problem or should I call no, the next person? I wanna, I wanna do this deal. I just think 15,000 is a little, you know, I'm, I'm greedy, so um, I respect you. Your guy wanna make a buck, but I think 15 is too much. What's the, what's the least you take to do a deal today? What's the most you'd be willing to pay if we can get this knocked out really quickly here? I offered, your, I, offered your five, I offered you five grand. Okay, I'm asking 15. So how about we work something out here? Suppose we could work something out and we could do maybe, uh, I don't know, how about 12,500? Would that work for you? How about, seven, how about we split the difference? You want 15, I want five. How about $7,500? Uh, well, if we split the difference, we're going to be at 10,000. Oh, half of fifteen is half of half of fifteen is seventy five hundred. I know I only went to PS one fifty two in New York, but I still know what half of fifteen is. If we can do if we can do ten thousand, that that would probably be the, the, the best I could do with us today. Would that I'll work give for you? you uh, mm, I'll give you ten, but you're all you're going to get paid out of escrow, not today. How about we do this? <sighs> Suppose we could work something out where we both get something out of this that makes us both happy and is fair for us both. Would that be something that, would, that we could work with and move I'm forward listening. on this deal? I'm listening. Okay. I'm willing to uh, put my money where my mouth is because I believe this is a very good deal. Why don't we, you can pay me 7,500 today and then another five at the escrow. Would that work for you? How about I give you five today and five at escrow? You're a hard man to negotiate with, Claude. That's right. All right. Is that the best you can do, Claude? That's my deal. That's my offer. Take it or leave it. Okay. I'll tell you what. If we take this today, then can I count on you to be a good man to work with and we can do future business? And actually, if we take this today, how quickly can we get this wrapped up? I'm, I'm ready to sign a contract right now. Send me a DocuSign. I'll wire you $5,000. I'll open escrow with my attorney and we'll close before the end of the month and you'll get your other five. Done deal. I'll send you the agreement right now, Claude. 
shake hands. All right. That's what, that's what, very good. Give him a round of applause. That was a really good role play. Uh, that's what, I'm telling you, this is what it sounds like, guys, sometimes. You don't want it to get contentious. You always, you got to, he might get emotional because we're talking about money here. Um, and, but you have to stay as intellectual, logical as possible. You don't want to get emotional. What happens when we get too emotional in a negotiation? Hmm. You shut down. You shut down. This stops working. Terry, anybody here ever make an emotional decision and decide the next morning it was wrong? Okay. Sometimes the best decisions, I'm learning this as I'm getting older. Uh, I, I always run to my wife for a lot of tough questions, and we always say, let's just wait till the morning sometimes. Just wait. Uh, when it's your, your brain is fresh, you're not as tired, you're less emotional about the topic. It's sometimes the best way to do business. Uh, that was a good role play. It demonstrated a lot of, that's the wheel and deal of what it is. I ended up saving $5,000 on that role play. Tony got 5,000 right now, which is very important to Tony, I would presume. And he's getting another five at the end. And I got a property that I'll make 40,000 on. And Jason got out of that property. Jason, that was a, even longer than some of the other questions. But I think we demonstrated through the whole process how to negotiate to get the property under contract and then if you don't have the money, how to remarket it and to make the short money by arbitraging or wholesaling it. So that, that was, that's what you learn from role playing, man. Uh, Claude, thanks very much, guys. That's, that was amazing. Yeah, I've got two minutes. For, I'm, I've got the, some appointments here today. I've got two minutes. Anyone want to have the last word or a quick question? Well, one of the things that I would have said uh, when he first, when you first gave him the objection of, you know, I wanted it 7,500 as I would say, well, Claude, you know, you're really the, the first phone call I've made. Uh, I really need to check with some of my other investors that, you know, are cash buyers as well. Uh, are you sure that, you know, that you can't uh, do something now? What do we call what George just demonstrated is a psychological trigger. What do, what do we call that gentleman? It's called the scarcity. 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 Also, it can also be called, and I'm checking, I have a board here with persuasion principles on it. A lot of them are from Dr. Cialdini, by the way, who I love. And uh, this, I would call this scarcity, also social proof. I've got plenty of other people to talk to, Claude. Don't you want to keep up with the Joneses? Don't yeah. you want to, oh, somebody else is going to take this deal. That's the scarcity and social proof put together. Makes George very powerful in a negotiation. Very well, good. The other, the other thing that you do a lot, Claude, is uh, the takeaway. You know, before I get off the phone, you know, that's, that's taking it away. And that's, that's exactly what, uh, what I would have tried in that, uh, negotiation. Another principle uh, before we go that's very important is I truly believe that the salesperson, uh, the entrepreneur cannot be subservient. Not to be a bully or using cheap intimidation or, or cornering people, but you have to be the authority figure in the room. You have to sound confident, energetic, and you have to portray to this person, listen, it's okay to say no to me, Mr. Stevenson. You know, um, we'll, maybe I'll call you with other deals and everything. Are you sure you don't want, I, I've, got, I've got 30 days to close on this deal. And from my point of view, I'm going to call some other investors to try to make that 15. Are you sure? Before I go, last chance, sir. The worst thing in the world is regrets. Do you want, when I get off this phone, do you think you're going to have any regrets that you lost this deal that you could make 35000 on? I'm hearing crickets. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's you, you. This is all about the words you use, creating the emotion, the greed in the other person, not being subservient, be the authority figure in the room. This is real, real important. Um, when you go to your doctor, you don't tell your doctor what kind of surgery to use, what kind of diagnostic to use, what kind of prescriptions, right? You rely on their expertise, whether a doctor, lawyer, dentist, accountant. You want to be that authority figure in the world, in the room. That is a psychological trigger that is very important. Most people, when I get on the phone to the average salesperson, how do you think they sound to me? <laughs> My 
like an average salesperson. Like an average salesperson. They're reading a script or they're nervous on the phone. They're lacking confidence. They don't portray that authority figure. And, you know, to me right away, I'm not, if I get a lot of calls from amateurs and, you know, and they're, and they sound like that on the phone, how, what credibility do they have to do a deal like I did with Jason or with, or with George or Tony before? What do you want? The, the parting what? Yeah, exactly. What do you, and the answer to the question is, what do you want people to say to you about you when you get off the phone? That has to be in your mind all the time. You obviously want them to say, I like that person. I feel good about them. I trust them. That's how you blow away your competition and you do a lot of deals all the time without driving, without overworking and getting a lot of phone and rejection and wasting a lot of time. Try to make those quality calls stay in control and practice a lot like Jason brought up earlier. I got to go, gentlemen. This was fun. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't have anything to talk about today. <laughs> it's always um, boring, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. This is a topic I, I love talking about sales. There's so many variations to it. It's um, the, it was the epiphany of the last word. It was, this is what changed my life financially getting better on the phone, talking to people. I think most, most people in business, I've never practiced or studied or worked at this skill. And this is why the failure rate for so many, is so high for so many people. They think it's the mechanics or relying on other people or computers and things like that. When it comes down to it, whether it's a billion dollar deal or a small deal, it's about uh, what that person thinks about you, what you communicated, what you persuaded and influenced them on. Uh, sales is always going to be the million dollar skill, gentlemen. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Shabbat shalom, uh, Ronnie. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you for joining. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, are we doing this again or is this it? Uh, ask Yassine. He scheduled this. Okay. <laughs> Check with him. <laughs>